God, come on. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I was up really late last night. I had friends over until like 3 a.m. I'm super tired today, hence the eye masks. And I have no energy to do anything or to put makeup on or to do my hair, nothing. So I thought what better time to sit, do an eye mask, and do a video that I haven't done in a really long time, which is a current favorites video. I have quite a bit of things here. A lot of them are makeup and skincare products, and some of them, I have a few things that are not. A lot of you guys ask me sometimes to do some non-beauty related faves, so I decided to throw some in this time. So, does anyone else have trouble with like eye masks just sliding down my face? By the end of this video, they'll be for my smile lines. But anyway, so first up, I have this MAC uh, blush. It's technically a blush. Now. When I was younger, um, like a teenager, my one of my favorite things to do, I was very makeup obsessed and this was like my first time kind of venturing out outside of the drugstore and outside of, you know, raiding my mom's makeup drawer. Um, I would always go to the MAC counter and I would spend, you know, whatever money I had from working whichever odd job and I would spend all my money on you know, new lipsticks, eyeshadows, I would always go to the MAC counter, they knew me there. You know, I feel like MAC was really popular for a while, it's still obviously really popular. As social media has grown and new makeup companies come out, I feel like I hear less and less about MAC, but I was feeling kind of nostalgic and was thinking, you know, MAC has so many nice products, I want to kind of go and peruse. So I went to their store and I got a few things and this is something that really stood out to me and that I've been using a lot of recently and that is this is one of their extra dimension blushes in fairly precious and I mostly have been using this as a highlighter it's a super pretty shimmery pinky peach and it gives a little bit of color so I've been like taking it on the cheeks and all the way up the cheekbone and you can see it right here it's just so pretty and it makes me really happy and it just gives your skin such a pretty pretty glow this by glossier um, I did do a swatch video and tutorial using these lid stars which just came out uh, about a month or so ago oh my god these are sliding I'm gonna have to take them off soon and reveal my very dark circles and I've been loving them these are really great this is my favorite color cub and it's um, the one I used in the video as well if you haven't seen it I'll put it right up here um, but it's like a bronzy pinky color and I've just been loving it for like those running out the door don't have time to do a whole face but want a little bit of something color and I did a little swatch there and these are just really great. You don't need a primer with them. They're liquid and then they dry down to a powder and they really don't move. This eye cream by Ole Hendrickson, Banana Bright Eye Cream, this has been all over social media and YouTube and that's the sole reason I bought this. I am always obsessed with eye creams and looking for like the perfect eye cream and I've never really found one that I really loved. I found ones that I really liked for a while but didn't feel like, oh my god, I have to repurchase. And I don't know if this is the one that I'm like sold on, but I've been really, really loving it so far. Ole Hendrickson was always to me like the line in Sephora that like nobody buys, but they always like stuff all of their samples into your bag or like they're always like point purchase or whatever. And I, I so that's my, was my impression of the line. And then when everyone was talking about this eye cream, I had to go and get it so so it looks like this it has like that yellow color I thought it would smell like bananas but what I like about it is that I kind of like glob it on dab it under my eyes and it just sinks right in it doesn't leave my skin my eyes greasy it doesn't interfere with my concealer it doesn't burn my eyes and I've noticed just a smoother appearance under my eyes I wouldn't say it's done anything for my dark circles I'm not saying that it's the fault of this eye cream because I've never found anything that's helped my under eye circles but I have noticed a difference in texture with this, so I really like it. I have a Way product here. This was the first product by Way that I ever tried. That's why I got the tra travel size. This is their Wave Spray. I have like a bunch of salt sprays. Those are always like my go-to hair product. I'm not a huge hair product person. I was just dying to try something by Way, and I really didn't need anything. And as you can see, I've used almost half of it. This stuff is legit. This is better than any salt spray I've ever used. 
this is definitely going to give you like a little bit goes a long way because it will give you like crazy texture and it also just smells so good like it's super floral it almost smells a little bit old lady but in like the best way all right let me fix my eye gels again oh my god this is just i am a mess also by way um if you guys caught my vlog last week i did go to a way party um, so I did get some like, you know, a goodie bag on my way out the door and this was in it and I had heard um, People talk about this product. It's the rose hair and body oil. I don't really have a use for hair oil I just my hair is just not super frizzy. It's not damaged. It's short But since it is body oil my body is really dry. So I decided to give it a try and I am hooked on this stuff as you like like I said I got this last week at the party and I've used quite a bit of it I'm obsessed with this stuff and it's not even about like what it does for my skin it's hydrating of course it's an oil it's a dry oil too so it sinks right in I can get dressed right away it's not a problem but it's the smell like I want this in a perfume it smells so good at first I thought it smelled like the Kai Rose roller bomb if you're familiar with that roller bomb roller ball it's a little bit different then I thought it smelled like Clinique happy and I was passing by a Clinique counter recently and I sprayed it on which that's an oldie and a goodie I don't care what you say that Clinique happy is really good but it's also not quite the same so I haven't been able if you know what this smells like and if you found like a dupe in fragrance form, please let me know in the comments because I just want to wear this all over. Next up we have a sunscreen by Pharmacy. This is the Green Screen Daily Environmental Protector SPF 30. I have the hardest time with sunscreen. They break me out no matter what. I just, they don't agree with my skin and of course I have to use them anyway so I'm just constantly trying to find like different sunscreens that don't break me out. I decided to try this one because a friend used it. This never broke me out, but I did find that it was a little bit drying. But now that it's getting warmer and my skin isn't so dry, this has been absolutely perfect. It hasn't made me feel dry, it hasn't broken me out, and it's protected me from the sun. It does leave a white cast on your skin that does fade. I'm very fair and it even makes me look pretty white, so it's really not friendly for anybody with medium to darker skin. So I wish, I hope they come out with like a tinted version so that other people can use it. Buy Fresh, I can't remember, I've been using this for a while now and I can't remember if I've mentioned it in a favorites video or not, but I'm gonna do it now. Um, this is the soy face cleanser. You guys know all about this, I'm sure, because everybody and their mom uses it. I didn't. I used it like years and years ago, and it was fine. And I bought it recently. I think I was like out of a cleanser, and I was somewhere where they didn't have it, and so I was like in a desperate need to just buy a cleanser that didn't irritate my skin or dry me out. It just never wowed me, and I can't really stand the smell of it. I don't really like, uh, it smells like cucumber. And I have like a weird, I love cucumbers, but I have a weird aversion to a cucumber smell. And um, it kind of nauseates me. So I, I just didn't care for it that much. I've been repurchasing it though. Like I, I found myself, like I thought I was indifferent about it, but then I'd be at the store, I'd be almost out of my cleanser, and I would just find myself buying this. Um, the other cleanser I'm referring to that was my favorite is the Indie Lee Rose Hip Cleanser. And I love that, love that, love that. So I was out of it for a while and I was strictly using this. Recently came across the Indie Lee, I think I was in Anthropology, and I bought it and it's in my shower and I still use that. That's my in the shower cleanser. But I have to say that I have now transitioned from that being my first favorite to this being my first favorite. And I would say Indie Lee comes to a close second. So it's really won me over. My skin just really likes this. I think it takes makeup off really well, but I always use the Milky Jelly Cleanser first to take off my makeup. So having makeup removing properties isn't super important to me in a cleanser, but my skin just really likes it. It doesn't strip it. It's just very calming and I've actually gotten used to the smell. <laughs> okay, let's just take these off because they're not even on my eyes anymore. Another product by Glossier. This is their Body Hero. A daily oil wash again I don't know if I you talked about this it did come out several months ago um, I've gone through this is my fourth bottle I think I just the packaging is really cute it's a shower oil um, body wash so it's an oil that when water hits it it turns into like a milky 
um, cleanser. I mostly use this for shaving. This is a great um, oil to use for shaving. What made me, what really like was the final nail in the coffin in terms of me like becoming, falling more in love with this was they did, Glossier did a, got the, a gynecological like stamp of approval that this is safe to use on your vagina. And ladies, if you're watching, like you know how important that is because almost everything is bad for your vagina. And um, this got a seal of approval and they did a test and nobody had any irritation or any issues. And so that's what I've been using for months now and I haven't had any issues either. And so I always have this in my shower. If I run out, it's like the end of the world. And to top it all off, it smells amazing. It smells similar to the Tom Ford Neroli Portofino fragrance if you're familiar. It smells very good, beachy, clean, really nice. Another hair product, this is by R & Co and it's the Cactus Shampoo. Um, I have talked about the IGK 1995, I think it's called, uh, shampoo and it's a similar product in this. It's the same kind of idea. It's a texturizing shampoo. So there's like clay or other junk in it. I don't really know what's in it exactly, but you're supposed to mis like shampoo your hair like usual with this don't use conditioner, and then your hair dries like super textured. I prefer this one now. I decided to try, when I ran out of the 1995, I got this one because I wanted to kind of compare. And I loved the 1995, but this one I would say is better. It gives you like way more texture. If you don't want that clean feeling in your hair, this is great, but it's like really gonna give you like a lot of texture. So if you don't like feeling like you have product in your hair, then you're gonna hate this, but I happen to love it. Okay, last Glossier product. This is their mascara. They just came out with it. It's Lash Slick. I posted a little review on Instagram um, and a lot of you guys in the comments asked me to review it. I have only been using it for a week because it just came out recently, but so far I am absolutely loving it. This has been the mascara I've been using strictly all week. You guys know I'm a Chanel Le Volume addict and to the, like, I will never give that up unless I fall in love with something else more. But I wouldn't say I love this more. I don't love it any less either, but it's very different. So the what I love about the Chanel is that it's kind of like thick and clumpy and smoky and it just gives you like crazy lashes. And I've never found anything that's comparable to the Lay Volume um, in how it works on me. But lately I've been trying various um, drugstore mascaras, looking for something a little bit more natural, a little bit more daytime. I didn't really have anything like that in the Chanel. Every time I would do it, it was like, too much lash and that's just not what I was going for. I wanted like a my lashes but better. So they sent this to me um, right before it launched and I tried it out. I loved it immediately. Now I'm not someone who minds a clump in the mascara like Chanel kind of gets a little bit clumpy but I happen to kind of like that look. So if this was to clump on me that wouldn't really bother me. However I know it bothers a lot of people and I want to say this I like couldn't even get it to clump. Like how many, I, didn't matter how many uh, coats I did on it. I, it made my lashes look so long. I didn't really realize why until I later found out that they have little tiny fibers. So it's a fiber mascara, but I can't, you can't see the fibers or feel them, but it made my lashes so long and separated and it held a curl really well. I do curl my lashes, but they often can fall flat depending on the mascara. This held it really well, but this is the ultimate test came when I was wearing this one night and I ended up crying in my car. I'm a woman and it happens. I was like wiping my face, like I had my sweatshirt was in the car and I was like using my sweatshirt as a tissue. I was wiping my face and I like pulled down my mirror ready to like wipe the mascara from my eyes. No joke, there was not even a single flake. And I was like ugly crying, like I wasn't even trying to like dab my eyes, like I was just letting it all happen. I was like mid cry and I like pulled down the mirror and I was just like, oh my God, this mascara is no joke. I just like snapped out of it like that. And so that's my review. I was like, oh my God, I can't even believe this. I like forgot what I was crying. NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Everyone talked about how good this is. I was always a creamy radiant concealer uh, for NARS. What? 
you guys flip flip a few of those words around and that's a normal sentence that was always my favorite concealer by nars and they came out with this one i'm not whenever something claims to be matte i tend to steer away i don't like matte my skin is dry i like everything to be dewy and glowy but i had some blemishes i had super dark circles i still do because again it's allergy season i'm a obsessed with the stretch concealer but there was a few days where I just needed like a full coverage concealer. I ran out of my uh, creamy radiant and instead of ordering that again I decided what the hell just order the matte and see what the deal is. This stuff's amazing. It, it It's not something I wear every single day because I do reach for my stretch concealer the most. That's my favorite but on days where like on a day like today, if I were to like put makeup on, I would have used this because I didn't get much sleep. My circles are really dark. If I break out, I'll put this on it. It just covers everything and it's not drying under the eye at all. And I thought it would be, but it's pretty creamy. So yeah, I love it. Okay, moving on to non-beauty related. This is kind of beauty related, but, um, but it's also not. Okay, so this is the high CBD Lord... Uh, the Lord Jones High CBD Body Lotion. So CBD is a cannabinoid. It's not the THC which gets you high. Um, I, look, I'm not like a, a expert in this field. So if you guys are curious about CBD, um, Google it. I because I, I don't really know what I'm talking about. But it's supposed to be really good for you, um, for pain, for anxiety, for all kinds of things, inflammation. Anytime I would feel pain, I would kind of forget that I had this, and so um, I wouldn't use it. The other day, I woke, I slept really weird, and I woke up with a pinched nerve in my back. And every movement, like every time like I kind of took a breath, it really hurt. I have like a massage stick that I can like press into my back to kind of like loosen up some of the knots. That didn't help. I tried like stretching, ibuprofen, none of it was really solving the problem. So finally I just rubbed this on and I was like, well, what the hell do I have to lose at this point? I think it was like an hour later, I forgot and I like realized that I wasn't in any pain and no matter like what position I moved, I couldn't feel it. And so, I don't know, like I've been using this every time I get like a stiff neck or a sore uh, muscle and this has been seriously helping. So it's really cool. You can get it off their website. It's kind of, it's pretty pricey, but I will say that it does work and I like that it's natural. I have one more CBD product. I am not like the CBD spokesperson all of a sudden, but maybe I am. I don't know. If you're new to my channel, I um, suffer from anxiety. I have an anxiety disorder I've had it my whole life. And you know, it ebbs and flows like everything else. Lately, it's been it's been uh, it's been flowing, you know. So um, a lot of people were recommending CBD. I was always really afraid of it because smoking weed. I have smoked weed in, in my day, and uh, it never did anything good for me. It always increased my anxiety. It made me really paranoid, gave me anxiety attacks. So I was always just very against it. Not against other people doing it, just against it for me. Like it's just not something that's fun. So it always kind of really freaked me out. Like no matter how many times people told me like CBD does not get you high, I like couldn't, I was not convinced. Like I was like, I'm gonna get high, like for sure. <laughs> but I finally bit the bullet and I ordered this CBD um, 300 milligrams from Pure Kana, um, a website I found that sells CBD oil. And again, I haven't been using this long so I can't really give like a full re review. So it's mostly like first impressions, but I thought it was worth mentioning. I waited for like a very calm day when I wasn't very anxious so I wouldn't like kind of psych myself out and I, you put it under your tongue and I just kind of relaxed for a while and I just found myself really relaxing like and I wasn't even sure if I was expecting anything but I just felt like there's no psychoactive effects it just I just felt like really relaxed and I loved that it was a natural form because Basically, anytime I felt that relaxed, it was from a prescription drug. Um, I'm prescribed things for my anxiety, and I don't really like to take them that often just because, like, they do impair you a bit. And, you know, it's just, it sometimes it's really necessary, but sometimes when you're just a bit on edge, you don't really want to have to, like, it's like weighing the pros and cons. It's like, do I want to then be super sleepy and, like, you know, or 
am I gonna just live with this bit of anxiety that I have right now? So this just, I feel like is that happy medium where, you know, I could have gone out and driven my car and been totally fine. I didn't fall asleep on the couch, but it really just took away like any anxiety and just made me feel like super at ease. So I'm not saying like everyone's gonna do really well with this, but you know, it's worth looking into. This one is a drug and this is Flonies. Um, okay, this is an allergy nasal spray. It's a corticosteroid, not a super fun recommendation. However, if I'm being honest, this is a fave for me recently. I was taking Allegra uh, and like Claritin every day because I was having the worst allergies and I wasn't sleeping. And they were giving me a bit more anxiety. They were making it harder for me to sleep even though my allergy symptoms were subsiding. I, I, they just were kind of making my heart race. And so I just started just using this Flonase. It's not the most fun thing to use, like you can kind of like taste it for a few minutes after you use it. But two sprays in each nostril every morning and I've been like in the clear. No allergy symptoms and no side effects. So this is my second bottle. Thanks Flonase. This is a photography book, which I mentioned briefly in my apartment tour video if you hadn't seen that yet, it's up there. Um, this is William Eggleston photography book. My favorite photographer, um, little known fact about me, I, when I was in high school, I actually, my dream was to be a photographer. That's what I wanted to do. I had like a big, really nice SLR camera. I took pictures of everything. I was super into it. I went to, actually majored in photography um, in community college and for years and then I eventually transferred and got into fashion design and then got into makeup and then who knows where I am now but but that was my passion for a long time and I eventually kind of grew out of it in the sense that I didn't want to be a photographer anymore but I never lost my appreciation and love for it if you haven't seen any of his things if you're into art if you're into photography check him out He's not for everybody. He takes beautiful color photographs. They're of just very mundane things. And I read a little bit of background on him and he's just very cool. You know, where he, at the time, all the famous photographers and successful photographers were of like beautiful landscapes and like amazing portraits and, you know, just very eye catching. And, you know, he had kind of said to his friend, you know, I don't I don't have anything beautiful to take a photo of. Like I live in the middle of nowhere, there's nothing around here. And so they were like, we'll take pictures of ugly things. And so that's what he did. And he took, a, took photos of ugly or mundane things. And I find it so interesting because they feel like moments captured rather than like this whole orchestrated photo, which I can appreciate those too, but there's something just really nice about this moment that's just like captured in time and you can you almost feel like you're there or you can almost like imagine what what that situation was you know like what was the scene like what did it smell like what did it feel like the look of the photos and the colors and stuff is just very interesting to me so i always really admired him which brings me to my final fave and this is a camera I was looking into what camera he used and what film and um, a lot of them are you know vintage or just really pricey and impressive cameras but through my search this kept coming up which is the Olympus MJU2 the threads were just like this is a really cool film camera that is inexpensive it's no frills and it gives like really unique photographs that look similar to his kind of style. So I, I found this on eBay and I ordered it and I got some film and I've been, this is my second roll I've gone through and I haven't gotten any developed so I don't know what they look like but it's kind of like reignited my um, old passion. And I wouldn't say it's like now going to be a new uh, career path. It's really more of just like, you know, an old hobby that I'm revisiting. So um, I've been having a lot of fun with it and I can't wait to get them developed. So it's really cool. It looks, it's all like automatic, but look at this. This part really freaks me out. 
Okay. Well, that's it. Those are all my faves. My God, this video is going to be so long. I've talked about everything for so long. But anyway, I was really passionate about all of these things. I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in trying any of these things. If you have tried them, what you think of them or what your favorites are that you think I would like because I'm always open to new faves. So thank you guys so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe obviously and I'll see you in my next video.